Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bruce Lim, and today we have a very special guest and a good friend of mine. We have Dato Te Tayong, the senior partner of Te Kim Te and Associates. Good afternoon, Dato, and welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dato Bruce. Right. Let's get a ball rolling. Can you just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? I, we all know you're an advocate and solicitor, but other than that, what are your areas of specialization and so on? Hi everyone, my name is Tay Tayong. You can call me Tay. I'm the senior partner of Tay Kim Tay Salina & Co, a law firm based in Malaysia. Uh, I'm also the uh, associate professors for two universities in China. Uh, in the meantime, I serve as a vice president for um, the Malaysian Entrepreneur Development Association, or uh, we, know, we call it as PUMM in Malaysia. And, and I'm also the uh, vice president for the uh, China ASEAN Legal Cooperation Center, uh, CALCC. Very, very impressive credentials. Thank you. <laughs> All right, um, let's get the ball starting right now. We have heard the Prime Minister, he presented the economic stimulus package for the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and we want to approach it from the viewpoint of business owners, entrepreneurs, and the, the corporate community out there. Uh, what do you think of it in a nutshell? What is the summary? Well, um, COVID-19, as we know it, is a global pandemic now. Um, the impact is huge, like uh, uh, what all of us can feel it now. Um, it, it, I mean, it's, it's a pandemic that uh, happened across all the regions, all the countries are involved. Um, uh, it's across all the industry. Um, uh, so it, it's not affecting a particular industry. You know, it's all the industry from tourism, from uh, uh, hotels and everything that you can think of. And, uh, and um, it's across all currencies as well. You know? So it's not a situation where you know, a, particular, a particular currency is uh, involved. So the impact is huge. Um, and uh, we see that uh, the situation is getting more and more serious. As of today, I think it's uh, close to uh, 600,000 confirmed cases. And I believe this uh, case will still go on uh, going up. So uh, as an entrepreneur, I think it's time to uh, really sit down literally at home because we are all bound by this MCO and uh, to plan and to rethink the way we do things um, in the coming months. Right, but with the economic uh, stimulus package, what are your views? Are they really helping businesses? Are they business friendly? Because we, we saw there was a $215 billion package and uh, there was a hundred billion of them being channeled towards the business uh, community for their survival and yeah, for their preparation. And what do you think of, of that? Because you mentioned well, businesses are suffering, right? It affects them in a negative way. Can you elaborate on that? Well, um, if we see that 250 billion, uh, it, it only speaks one thing. The government is very serious about this um, entire thing about this stimulus uh, package. Um, I followed this uh, package, uh, the speech as well as text uh, very closely. Yes, that was announced by the prime minister yesterday. Um, of course, um, we see that there are certain uh, packages uh, that was announced that is uh, in favor uh, for the entrepreneurs. For example, the uh, cash flow is, is trying to solve some cash flow issue um, about the uh, deferment of six months for HRDF fund. And we see that the companies can actually discuss about the, uh, the EPF or restructure the EPF uh, payments uh, with, with the staff, as well as we look at the uh, the deferment of uh, three months for the uh, PCB, the tax payment. Uh, however, um, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs or in the business community thinks that um, this is not enough. Um, more you know, could be done to help out this industry because uh, especially the SME who's having a lot of um, uh, pressure in, when it comes to cost of holding and um, to, to maintain the staff force. So you know, in, in the market, um, of course, I think since yesterday after the announcements, uh, we have been getting a lot of uh, opinions and WhatsApp and messages 
from different groups in, in our phone uh, to say that hey, this is not enough, this is not enough, Nepal government should have done better. Because if you look at it, um, the stimulus package, um, it's uh, really in favor of the, the people um, uh, who are affected by it. Uh, um, so a lot of uh, fund, uh, this Pembiayaan uh, uh, is given to the people. But uh, from the business community side, somehow the uh, consensus that you know it's is uh, uh, not enough. However, uh, Bato, I feel that um, uh, the entrepreneurs must also ask uh, ourselves, you know, why did we enter and and start to uh, become the entrepreneur? Because nobody forced anyone to become entrepreneurs. Everybody did this by because fine, one but everyone goes into entrepreneurship because they they also hope for the best. But uh, we know, and I think the prime minister even mentioned it uh, in his speech that we are living in uh, extraordinary times. This COVID nineteen is unprecedented. That means it's it's beyond the uh, uh, expectation of most ordinary people you know, especially entrepreneurs who get into business. We didn't come in with the expectation yes. for COVID-19 to, to hit us and for uh, a movement control order to take place over a period of four weeks. So definitely, as you mentioned, everyone is affected. And now we are looking into areas whereby the package can uh, alleviate some of this pain. And we know that SMEs, they employ more than two thirds of the working Malaysia, uh, the Malaysian workforce. So you might be throwing goodies at the, the ordinary people uh, of Malaysians, but at the end of the day, it is also a question of survival. Will that now come to one point of it? You mentioned correctly about EPF, HRDF, and, and all these other statutory contributions being put on hold, which is good. But I think the biggest pain point would be salaries and its related issue on employment. Is this 600 ringgit subsidy for employees, for each employee who earns below 4,000 ringgit sufficient? Remember, it does come with a proviso that they must suffer above 50% uh, loss in January. What are your views on that? Well, I think there's a, a survey that was done since yesterday. Um, I think over 60% of the businesses suffer more than 50% uh, drop since January. Uh, I think that is obvious. However, uh, from the entrepreneur's point of view, of course, we are hoping that uh, the 600 ringgit could be more. Uh, uh, but I think we have to um, uh, sit back and we think again about holding you know, uh, uh, it, it depends on what's our, our opinion about this uh, staff force, about uh, uh, the people that are, are working for us. Um, do we think that they are an asset or do we think that these people are the liabilities? I think, um, uh, i give you one example, Dr. Bruce. Um, you know, uh, for the property investors, you know, people tend to buy properties and sometimes at certain months, then the property is vacant. Could be one month, could be two months, could be three months, and they have zero income. So do we still service the, in, uh, the installment of the loan? And the answer is clearly yes. And uh, do we actually cut loss and throw them directly and immediately? The answer is no. If we think that the asset is going to bring us a lot of uh, benefit in the future. So back to the uh, staff force again. So I think uh, while a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and bosses are thinking that, you know, the ways and, uh, and I, I've been getting a lot of calls and uh, about, you know, can I do this, can I do that, you know, all these things. But um, I, I take a slightly different approach where uh, I think the entrepreneurs should rethink again um, how to go through this tough time together. Um, so I think that's a key. It is a very crucial time uh, to test the relationship between the company and also the staff force. I think this is the time, uh, a testing time for, for such an employer-employee relationship. Right. Uh Two related questions to what you have just said. The first one, um, you were saying that uh, you drew an analogy with property investments, but that is also uh, predicated on the, on the premise that you have the money to pay uh, your installments. But what we are facing yes. right now in this unprecedented 
situation is that employers no longer have the cash flow to pay for employee salary. And uh, how do you approach this idea about negotiation? Because the 600 subsidy is predicated on two things. There must be a loss of more than 50%. And secondly, they must keep all employees and there should be no salary uh, deductions for employees yeah. uh, that earns below 4,000 ringgit. So it's between being caught in a rock and a hard place. How do we get out of this? Or how do we approach this? Well, uh, I think we have to uh, sit down. I mean, the employers have to sit down with the employees to discuss. Um, uh, for example, the airline industry, uh, Mars, um, Asia, I think Malindo are badly hit. And uh, we all know that uh, the, the they are take, taking a certain um, amount of pay cuts. or um, So for the companies, I think um, it, it is important to sit down and explain the truth, uh, the, 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 cash flow, the cash flow situation with the uh, employees uh, for them to understand. Yes, uh, um, from, from what I understand so far, uh, the government is trying to keep all the employees in place. So there shall not be any, um, uh, uh, they're trying to, uh, avoid the situation of retrenchment and also deduction of um, uh, this uh, annual leave and all these things. So, but one thing we can actually think of is you know, perhaps in a, uh, another way is to, to do a delayed payment in staggered payment saying that, yes, I will still pay you, but you know, currently I just simply don't have the money to pay you. So, you know, could I just do it in, in the later? Is that allowed under the law? Um, I, I think, uh, at this moment, what I what I read is cut. You cannot use annual leave, but uh, and a lot of uh, 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 reports uh, uh, says that you should discuss with the the, the employees. And I, I think uh, so far I haven't seen any um, uh, report to say or any law or regulation saying that you can't. Technically, you shouldn't. But uh, if like what you say just now, if you really have no money, then. Um, you have no money, so you've got to do something and, and at least discuss with them, make them understand um, mm -hmm. about it. So, and I think uh, one point to, uh, to, to take note is that if the, uh, the discussion is uh, and a negotiation between employees and employees, uh, employers and employees, and you have come to a consensus um, on certain things, I think that should hold water as well. So that's allowed under the labor laws. For example, I've got uh, a cash crunch with me right now. And uh, I find that the 600 subsidy may ease a little bit of the pain, right? So I still want to have access of to that 600 ringgit subsidy. But despite that, it is still enough, not enough to cover the payroll. Is the employer still allowed to negotiate to uh, sort of delay payment or pay it out on a staggered basis because we are looking at situations that I've heard reports of even zero income over the next couple of months. Yes, um, if uh, the employers, employees are able to sit down and this is the acceptable uh, arrangement between them, uh, I don't see any reason why because uh, if if we look, if we approach this from the employee's perspective, if they really truly understand the, the cash flow issue of the companies, plus uh, they think that, okay, um, uh, I'd rather keep my job rather than uh, going for retrenchment option or VSS. Um, so perhaps I think they could, this could be a, a workable solution where people are willing to take it, the, the money a bit later. Uh, of course, um, we have employment law that you know you are supposed to pay the salary between the seven of every working month. However, no, we are in this dire situation. I think um, uh, legal issue aside, I think uh, more importantly is the, the uh, cooperation between the employers and employee and and how the entrepreneurs approach uh, the employees. Like what I say just now, um, do we actually value them as an asset? Or do we value them as a uh, 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 liability at this moment? Right. If it's, a, I think it's, it's, it's all right to actually sit down and uh, discuss with everybody. So in the spirit of openness and a so-called uh, partnership with the employees, uh, let's say a 
a sort of uh, 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 an agreement could be reached upon, should this agreement be documented? Because uh, what is to prevent the employee from running to the labor uh, labor office? Yeah, um, of course, this uh, document, uh, if should uh, the, the, the parties, both parties reach an agreement, this document uh, has to be, uh, doc uh, this, this arrangement has to be documented and it has to be signed. Um, right. To prevent any party to renegade against their own promise. But uh, of course, you may ask that, you know, uh, uh, is this agreement allowed or is, is it legal and would this be challenged? Um, uh, the truth is, we do not know because this is uh, the first time in Malaysia that uh, we, we are experiencing this MCO. So uh, we have to wait and see. But uh, if, uh, assuming uh, you have come to an agreement with the staff and they are, they are getting paid, although it's a bit later, uh, by the time you, you, you um, uh, uh, carry out the promise to pay them, um, in my personal opinion, that should not be a, a, a ground to actually challenge uh, the, uh, the employer. Okay, good. Um, I'm just going to move on, but before that, I'm just going to ask you one more thing on the 600 ringgit subsidy. So how do we claim this? There seems to be an area of vagueness and how do we prove uh, more than 50% drop in businesses? Who do we need to uh, show this to? Because clearly it's in from January right down to March, and we are just looking at management accounting, not audited uh, accounts. So how do we approach this? And there are so well, many answers out there. In, in all honesty, I do not have the answer as well because uh, that was announced yesterday. And uh, the announcement, as we read it uh, over and over again, it's uh, quite open-ended. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the drop, is it against uh, January? Or the drop is it against the, the result last year, and also what's the implication and the ways of which uh, how we can actually approach and apply for this grant. And more importantly, a lot of entrepreneurs ask me is that when are they able to get this money? Because uh, uh, this is based on the assumption that I get this money, then I will be able to maintain the staff force. And right. today, it, um, it, today is twenty eight. So. Um, uh, really this, uh, in, in a realistic term, another two days um, or three days, it's actually the payroll day. So, you know, with MCO, all of us are locked uh, at home. Then how are we going to apply and get this 600 ringgit to uh, get the cash flow moving? So these mm -hmm. are the uh, questions that uh, I, I think at this moment yet to have any specific answer. So we, ha we have to see the uh, announcements. Um, right. And so I'll arrange for a future session with you on that. Now, what about yeah. those who earn <laughs> above 4,000 ringgit? Uh, what do we do with the more senior members of the, of the staff? Are there avenues for discussion for a pay cut? Are there avenues for, dis for discussions on uh, things that you do in lieu of a salary cut, such as training, upskilling? Uh, is it that open-ended with... Uh, employees who earn above 4,000 ringgit? Yes, I think uh, for those employees earning more than 4,000 ringgit, um, the avenues for, for uh, discussion and, in, and negotiation with them is, is, is there. So this is a time where a lot of people are sitting at home. And I think this is the best time for retraining, uh, training and development um, uh, during this period of time or you know, finding things that you could do something productive uh, for, uh, from home, actually. Um, uh, you know, I've known, you know, when, when having this MCO at home, I've actually um, uh, received calls from an uh, electrical shop. They asked me, you know, uh, do you want to buy something? You can go and check our catalog. Then I say, are you open? They say, no, I'm, we are not open. You can order from, from the catalog and we'll send it to your house. So That's I think right. these are, so, so having MCO doesn't mean, I mean, we have to find creative ways to uh, uh, go through this uh, tough time. Um, um, you know, I, I do online shopping as well. Uh, this, this shirt is uh, by Ox White. <laughs> I, bought, I bought it online during this MCO. Now, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think uh, uh, businesses should uh, think how to actually go around it and uh, uh, work on the revenue side. Um, uh, in this tough time. So I think uh, 
planning and how to strategize the, 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 the direction of company is uh, very crucial at this moment. Right. Um, again, on that, I'll get back to strategies, but uh, this thing, there's a word that is on the mouth of most Malaysians right now. It's a Latin word, legal term called force majeure, right? Yes. Uh, yes. How is force majeure going to affect employment contracts right now? You know, from the standpoint of employees, from the standpoint of employers, uh, this is all unprecedented. This is something we did not anticipate, nor expect. It's an, it's an extraneous vitiating factor. Do you think COVID-19 is force majeure? And maybe you can just explain what force majeure is from your point. Well, force majeure is a legal concept uh, to explain um, unexpected uh, situation like war, lockdown, riot, um, this kind of, um, and uh, it's a very, there is a very common word called ex of God. Uh, so situation that none of the uh, parties anticipate um, the occurrence of such event, and both parties uh, 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 did not uh, contribute to such events. So um, it is a concept usually used in the laws of contract where no both party enters in a contract and, and um, for example, to buy and sell a certain good. And during this lock, uh, this NCO, you are, you, are, you are locked at home, so you are not allowed to go out and therefore you are not able to fulfill the, the contract. Um, so this, uh, this, this is what it means by force majeure. And um, it, it is a way to say that, you know, I'm supposed to do this. But because of this event, force majeure, and therefore I can't uh, perform my side of the duty and uh, I, I try to get out from the, the contract. So uh, in essence, it, it, it simply means this. Uh, when it comes to um, employment contract, um, using force majeure at this moment... Um, are they common, force majeure clauses in employment contracts? And how are they usually worded? I, I do not think this is something very common. So... Uh, uh, in, in employment contract. And one thing about force majeure is that if you want to use this um, and, and to, to support your argument, uh, you have to uh, state such a clause in the contract. So um, as far as I know, force majeure is not something very common in, uh, in employment contracts. So if you do, you do not have, then you can't rely on this. But having said that, um, you must also you know, approach from the, uh, 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 from, from the perspective of that, uh, from uh, the employers, for example. Uh, are you using the uh, force majeure to say that because of MCO, if it uh, const uh, constitutes a force majeure, and therefore you want to terminate this contract of employment? I think you can't because um, uh, this event, this intervening event, so far is about maybe uh, four weeks. So, and your contract of employment, you know, it's, it's for, for a long time. So, you know, it does not of the contract. So, right. you know, to argue about Forge Majore to terminate the contract, I, uh, I, 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 I don't think this will uh, really stand. But from the employee point of view, um, I don't think anyone will use this clause against them, themselves. <laughs> so, so, uh, the, so I think, but this concept is, is very important for entrepreneurs if they, uh, they have some pending contractual obligations. For example, they are supposed to uh, deliver certain goods or they are selling certain goods and they are yeah. not able to do it. So I think this concept is, 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 uh, is important, but when it comes to uh, this uh, employment, um, I, I don't think it's common and uh, it's, it's really hard to, to, to argue in, in such a manner. Right, you did mention about existing obligations. How about obligations to pay rent, obligations to deliver uh, goods and, and, and pay suppliers and, and all that? What are your views on that? Yes, I think the obligations to pay rent uh, uh, has to continue, uh, has to continue unless uh, there's a force majority in, in a contract. But uh, as far as... Uh, Does uh, MCO constitute a force majeure event? It depends on how we draft the force majeure. But you know, if it's drafted in a wide sense that it covers um, uh, government directive, uh, some government uh, 
uh, order, yes, I think it, it constitutes. But if it's only very limited to war or riots and full stop, then you can't uh, technically. So force majeure, it's, it's, it's a very uh, wide term, but you have to be very specific in term, in when you're drafting a contract and uh, whether it co uh, constitutes or not, whether it covers under uh, the situation of MCO, it goes back to the contract itself. Right, so, so I can imagine many entrepreneurs rushing to review their contracts right now. Yes. Before they and, come and back. Yeah, the contracts are, a lot of contracts are in the office. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so that's in so far as, as uh, payment of salaries, employee uh, and worker relations, as well as suppliers. But right now, in terms of business continuity, uh, survival during the lean months uh, ahead, and we heard of this phrase, you know, especially more during this MCO, which is cash is king. You've got to preserve your cash if you have it, right? And you've got to somehow have access to cash either through borrowings or through raising funds from investors. Uh, what are your views? Which is the most viable or probably a combination and what's the best combination that we shall have? And probably the priorities too. Um, I look at it in two ways. Number one, number one is uh, to have a revenue, uh, to have the continuing revenue for the companies. So the traditional way or the previous uh, way that we, we do business, uh, if it's entirely offline, I think this is the time for going online. Uh, E-commerce and, uh, you know, uh, and all these kind of uh, uh, ways to bring in continuous uh, uh, revenue because we got to change the way we, we, we do things and how we deliver. Um, that's so right, that, but that, SME lifespan, from what I hear, they can only last between uh, three months to six months, un uh, unlike larger corporations with uh, larger access to funds. So between three to six months, and if you're looking at micro, you're looking at even smaller, uh, shorter time frame. And we know that in order to pivot into online, there's also this gestation period before you see some form of revenue from new markets that you're trying to explore. So now the question is survival over this, this period, you know, this short period, what is required? You know, now we are learning, we are pivoting, we are reorganizing our resources, but it may be three to six months down the line before we see some form of revenue from new customers or existing customers that we have, uh, such as your, the hardware seller or your computer supplier that called you. But what about, I'm talking about this crucial, crucial survival stage, which is during the MCO period and the months immediately uh, following it. Well, um, different uh, things, there are different options one could, uh, could do. One thing is uh, going online. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing is uh, uh, break into a smaller uh, uh, portion. For example, uh, we've just ordered cake from this uh, uh, artisan cake, uh, Jean and Nick. So they used to do an entire cake, an artisan cake, cost few hundred ringgit. So instead of doing the entire cake, they do in a smaller portions, maybe price, pricing between uh, 30 ringgit to uh, 50 ringgit. So, um, and uh, with the delivery service uh, still going on now, so we are able to get our cakes you know, right at our doorstep. And I, I, and I asked him, um, you know, how the, how, how's the pre and, uh, uh, during this MCO, he said that the, the sales during MCO, the revenue is um, uh, increased by 150,000, 150%. And uh, the number of customers, I think it goes down to like uh, 70 folds from his previous uh, uh, pre uh, MCO days. So we have to rethink how to cut the uh, services into a simpler portion. Um, to, this is one of the ways to, 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 uh, to deliver to our customers. And another way is to, uh, to do pre-sale. Um, I've also heard about um, from Joel's presentation. I think that is another brilliant idea. Uh, oh yeah, I was just with him three days ago. He was talking about save my faith or something like that. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. So basically, uh, selling credit or, or uh, a uh, uh, something to the, the customers and this to be delivered uh, after the, the MCO is lifted. And the customer, of course, you have to give some upside to, uh, for example, 80 ringgit thing, you get 100 ringgit, 120 ringgit. So these are the ways you have to be uh, uh, creative. So it depends on which industry um, you're from. Um, and you have to find the, the, the uh, strategies that is more suitable that, uh, that it works for the, the company. But it is a time where they, you know, all the directors of the company have to sit down and uh, to think about it. Yeah, that's, that's very, very sound advice. Nothing is best and more sustainable than getting businesses from your customers, right? And, the, yes. and, and during these times, there's just so much upside and you can't go any further down. So this is the best time to experiment with new ideas and innovate and pivot your business. That's right. That's right. So because during the MCO, and of course, we are not talking purely uh, during the MCO period, uh, COVID-19, um, is the war against COVID-19 is much longer. So we, we still have a long way to go. So, uh, However, we still have a thing that um, uh, there are still um, uh, uh, certain... Uh, that people are still need it's, people still need to survive, eat, and you know they need to live. So uh, they are uh, you just have to find ways. How do you get your products to your customers? So um, so take away the traditional ways of doing it. Maybe you have to be more creative now. And uh, how to you know strategize the techniques um, to get uh, uh, to your customers? So I think these are. Uh, but in the meantime, um, I I also have to say that uh, besides. Getting to the customers, I think uh, getting closer with the suppliers uh, is equally important because if there's no supply to your things, then you know you can't technically deliver to your customers. So, um, so it's time to sit down and you know uh, discuss and how to collaborate better with the suppliers as well in the entire chain. Very, very sound advice indeed. But in uh, again, so one way of getting cash, which is the best way, is to get it is to find new customers, find new segments, new ways of doing things to get new sources of revenue. Okay, what about the yes, stimulus? Correct. Add again to the stimulus package. Uh, what are your views on the SME collateral free loans that are available right now and, uh, and other parts of the package from a legal standpoint? Should we take it? Uh, there is also the moratorium against uh, loans. Should we take it since they come with uh, uh, interest? Yes, I think uh, it, it depends on the financial cash flow situation of the uh, company. Um, if you are able to uh, sail through this time, then if you think that there's no need, then you, know, then you worked on um, how to get more revenue in. However, if the financial situation of the company is um, it's really tight, I've also heard about the companies that are not able to pay the salary for, uh, for the month of March uh, this year. So uh, if you are in that sit uh, situation and, um, and uh, uh, getting this uh, loan, I, I think the interest that is reduced it uh, under the uh, uh, specific uh, relief facility that the uh, that was announced by the Prime Minister yesterday. 3.75%, I think. Uh, yes, I, I think they have lowered down to 3.5%. So oh, okay. if you have a situation that you need, you need to um, actually uh, get this kind of facility to sail through this period, I think by all means, um, uh, you just simply cannot let the company uh, just go down like that. Right. So priority, find new customers, Talk to your employees, save them, continue your business, and uh, that's your advice. Any that's other correct. things moving forward, Dato? Before well, we come I, to a close. Uh, yeah, on um, approaching from entrepreneurs' uh, perspective, I think this is not. I'm sure this is not the first um, hardship that we are facing now, and uh, for sure this will not be the last. Um, uh, hardship or financial uh, hardship that we are facing now. So we just have to be uh, uh, more vigilant, um, uh, more committed to, 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 to the ways how we get through to the customers. So uh, we've got to be mentally prepared about it. 
And of course, a lot of people still complaining about, um, uh, you know, why uh, government not giving the uh, entrepreneurs enough, you know, it's doing good uh, package and all this. But I will approach it in a slightly different manner. Um, uh, like what, what I said uh, a moment ago, I think we, we become entrepreneur by choice. This is our choice. So we got to be mentally prepared for this. And uh, moving forward as well, I think uh, one thing about this entire COVID-19 taught us is about financial planning. From the corporate, uh, from the company's perspective, as well as the, uh, the personal perspective, um, that is to say that, you know, um, we have to assume that, you know, if you do not get the income, for a certain number of months, then how are you going to survive? If the moment we stop working and you can't uh, put food on table in the next month, I think that is extremely dangerous. So, um, and I, I see that uh, at this moment, a lot of people are feeling in the, uh, such a situation. It's either you have to control your costs of the company or you, know, you have to find ways to bring in revenue. This works for individuals as well as entrepreneurs as well. So, you know, for companies that, you know, the moment COVID-19 comes in and you can't pay the salary for much, I think uh, you really have to change the business uh, strategies um, uh, again, uh, moving forward. So, uh, financial planning for cash flow is very important. You could make a lot of revenue, but if you're strapped by cash, the company will go, go down just simply because you don't have the uh, blood line, the blood to actually survive. Right. With that... I think we've come to the conclusion of our interview. I would like to thank you, Dr. Tay, for your insights and sharing of tips and expertise. So it's very clear that you are not just a lawyer, you're an entrepreneur at heart as well. And um, I think there are a few lessons that we are very clear today. Uh, we should not be asking for more, but should be thankful for what we have. And given the circumstance, we just need to be innovative and uh, looking for new ways of doing business because this is no longer business as usual. Keep your employees, think of them as your assets and uh, renegotiate with them. They'll understand if we are all on the same boat. And thirdly, if you are strapped, then get hold of uh, whatever goodies that the government has handed out. Let's not ask for more to tide us through this short-term period. And um, God willing, we would be able to make it through to the recovery and uh, eventual growth. Any other parting words, Dato? Well, um, thanks for having me. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dato and also the team who has brought up this um, uh, group from Malaysia. The reason I say this is uh, I think during this time, it is good to have uh, uh, different personalities from different industry um, to speak and to share the experiences, the knowledge and the expertise. Um, so I, I think you guys are doing a great job uh, for, for putting this, this platform up. And, uh, and this is so crucial at this, uh, this time that you know, people are able to listen and uh, to reach out. And we also think about, you know, if without MCO, maybe me and you will be speaking in face to face. And this, this right. is uh, the way it. But because of MCO, then we have to do this, uh, uh, this interview online. And uh, this is how we innovate as well. And the advantage of doing this is you can share this thing to, you know, through the yeah. social media and you can reach out to the larger, uh, larger audience. So I, I think thanks for having me. Uh, it's, it's an honor to, to, to speak to you. Welcome. And it's good to see you here. I guess this is the new normal, the new way of doing things. And we should be thankful and, uh, for this. Uh, even there is a silver lining behind this MCO as well. Again, I'd like to thank you again, Dato. Have a good afternoon. Yeah, yeah.